Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Natanda and I make videos on construction, lifestyle and travel. Also, if there's an orange tinge to this video, it's because I'm filming it at night. So today we're going to talk about feasibility studies. It's what it is, how it's done, why it's done. Let's get right on into it. So let's first begin by clarifying what a feasibility study is. A feasibility study is simply an assessment of the practicality of a proposed plan or method before construction commences. Just as the name implies, it's simply just asking yourself, is this feasible? Should we go ahead with it? So for example, you ask yourself questions like, do you have the machinery to do what you propose to do? Do you have the labor, the tools and the resources necessary? And will the project actually get you a profit? So uh, when should a feasibility study be conducted? It should be done during the earlier stages of the projects. Depending on the complexity of the project, it can oftenly, often, <laughs> oftenly, it can often be carried out throughout the project. So you check, are we still on budget? Is it still feasible? Should we still go ahead with it? Should we stop or should we change? It's literally an ongoing process. So we've covered the what, when, and now we need to talk about the why. So a feasibility study is often done because it helps with determining the opportunity factors that which help make a project a success, which is extremely important. I mean, that's the reason why you're doing the project in the first place so that you can succeed. Oh, why is this plane so loud? Let's get on to the how. How is it done? So um, a feasibility study can be done in seven steps. So number one, you conduct a preliminary analysis. So in construction, you first think about it during the tender phase, the effort that you're putting in for this, is it worth it? Are the rates worth it? Is it going to be profitable? Are you not using your resources ineffectively? Is it worth actually really putting all this effort to, to get in? And once you're in, are you going to be able to deliver and are you going to be able to make a profit in it? So you conduct a preliminary analysis before diving in check it all out check how much money is being offered to you check um, how much effort you're gonna put in during the tender check the rates are the rates um, good enough you're gonna be able to make up squeeze out a profit from step number two you prepare a projected income statement so this requires you to work backwards um, you start with what you expect the income from the project to be, then what investments are needed to achieve that goal. This is the foundation of an income statement. Things to take into account here include what services are required, how big your team is going to be, who needs to be paid for what, what kind of machinery or startup um, 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 money. Okay, this is the money that you'll be getting per month. Now, this is what is going to go to the foreman. This is what's going to go to the cubists. This is what's going to go to hiring out equipment. This is what's going to go to the subcontractors. You work backwards to gauge whether or not this is viable. Step number three is conducting a survey or perform market research. In construction, isolated in construction, market research means you're checking out your competition. Will they be able to do it? What rates are they bidding at? And also, who the client is research them are they able to ride the wave with you will they assist you if things don't go according to plan so this is a very very important step because it's going to give you the clearest picture of how good or how bad the project is going to go so this is one step that needs to be done so 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 clearly and intensely and because you might be in a community where there's a lot of strikes and they might stop the project from happening and it might cost you more money to actually just be there so steady just you no know, overall non-financial like all these other factors that are related to the market step number four is plan business organization and operations so once the groundwork of the previous steps has been laid, it's time to set up the organization and operations of the planned business venture or project in this case. It should be thorough and include all the costs, fixed investments, operation costs. These costs uh, can address things like equipment, merchandising methods, uh, rent, uh, the staff, supplyability, uh, availability, overheads, etc. Step number five is putting together an opening day balance sheet. So literally, it's a balance sheet. You look at your assets and your liabilities, are they balancing out? So this includes an estimate that can be, that should actually not can, that should be as accurate as possible. So in order to do this, you create a list that includes items, source, costs, and available financing, liabilities to consider as, as such things as leasing, purchasing of land, buildings, equipment, financing. Literally just do a balance sheet 
of your assets and liabilities. Step number six is to review and analyze all your data or data. I say data because I feel like that's how you say it if you're in South Africa. Data. <laughs> that's not the point. Um, all these steps are very, very important and should be done. But when you get to step number six, this is where you get a chance to review how realistic your plans have been. Check if anything needs tweaking. So take a moment to look over your work one last time, re-examining your previous steps, such as your income statement and compare it to your expenses and liabilities. Is it still realistic? Is it really working out? This also um, gives you time to think about the risks and analyzing and managing and then also coming up with contingency plan in case things don't go as planned. So you, again, get to step aside, check out what's going to be risky. What can we do if this happens? Yeah. So just review and analyze all your data. That's number six. Lastly, after all those steps, you now make a decision. Do we go ahead? Do we not go ahead? You're now at the point to make a decision about whether or not the project is feasible. That sounds simple, but all the previous steps were leading to this decision-making moment anyway. A couple of other things to consider before making the binary choice is whether the commitment is worth the time. Just think about it. The time, the effort, and the money is aligned with the organization's strategic goals and long-term aspirations. So for big complex projects, you can do this four times in a year, I think. Taking a moment to pause. Should we go ahead? What are the costs that are we gonna incur in the future? Is it still realistic? Should, is it easier to now stop or do we keep going? So yeah, this is what it all comes down to. A feasibility study just helps you know whether or not you should go ahead with the project, literally. So if you are doing an assignment about feasibility studies, I hope that this gives you a, an overview that is simplified but it might be a bit more complex when you're doing it at school, um, trying to break down all the formulas and understanding what ste the steps might not be exactly like this. So hopefully this just gives you a different perspective of it and kind of highlight a simplified version of what the point is so that you're not just cramming the work that's given to you. Anyway, please do comment below if you think it was helpful and whether it has made your life easy or not. And yeah, thank you for all your suggestions, guys, and see you later in another video. Mm -hmm.